Right, the first car we're going to start off with, it was Rob's car, now it's owned by somebody else. And it's a very familiar car to quite a lot of people, 80s, 90s again. Oh yes, it is a Sierra. It's not just any Sierra, it's a Sierra 1.8. Just started it up. Diamond white. Ooh, we have the trims to go on a J plate. So, this is the Sierra that I remember as a child. My, my uncles had one. Can't remember if it was either a 2000E or something a bit more special. It had a spoiler, it had two tone paint, it had leather seats. This one doesn't have any of that. It's just as you would expect. It's the hatch version, smoke rear lights, and this is actually pretty straight. It's got a few scabs here in the corners. But um, as you can kind of see, uh, or hear I should say, there is a bit of a tapping noise going on. And unfortunately, the 1.8 CVH in this engine, it's had new hydraulic tappets, but that has not cured the problem. Uh, I think what we've got is a worn camshaft, and that is a very common thing with CVHs, particularly if they're not serviced on the dot. Ugh, a bit frustrating, but it's a work in progress. This is a sumptuous car. Obviously, we've got the twin stalks because we've got some, uh, obviously, the interior lights, the headlight stalks, very, very thin stalks. Uh, I've just put it in neutral because I started it in gear. That was stupid of me. It went forward when I started it. But, oh, yes, lovely door cards, a lovely glove box. It's absolutely sumptuous. No cracks in the dashboard whatsoever. And the Oh, vertical heating and cold air controls. Yes. Ah, I can feel that and I can smell the aces. Ah, this takes me back. Got a Ford Radio 2006 RDS. I believe that possibly is original, but I could be wrong about that one. We have got a cigarette tray at the bottom. Well, it's a coin holder in this case, uh, which is what people adapt them for these days. We've got a cigarette lighter down here, fan speed, so free speed, yeah, it's usual. Uh, you've got, oh, we've got um, an adjustment for the backlight into the dash. That's a nice feature that not every car got. A light array of a rev counter. That's nice to see a rev counter, but you would expect that on this type of car. Um, I'm quite lucky to have it in Ruby, to be honest. And we've got the usual Ford pressy buttons, which I think are quite, uh, actually pretty nice to look at and pretty nice to use, to be honest. They have that nice, firm click. These vents, oh yes. Wow, you can open them up. Yeah, I'm getting good ventilation there. Absolutely fantastic. And obviously, if I just pull the bonnet catch, there we go. Oh, a nice material on the doors. I have to say, the seats are really nice. The seats are really supportive of these bucket seats. Ah, yes. Lots of family space. I could understand why people bought these, maybe over Montego. Oh, and I forgot, the, obviously, the electric window switches, exactly where they commonly are on a lot of 80s cars that had the luxury of electric windows right in the middle and not on the doors. But that changed later on. Okay, that is one big lump. Look at the size of that crankshaft pulley. That is absolutely huge. A big motor rib belt. Massive alternator hanging off the side. Huge air ducting going into this huge whacking air filter. Oh, I like how the screen wash is sticking into the side. You can hear the tapping from the camshaft. Unfortunately, this engine does need a bit of work. The distributor hangs off the front of the engine. Quite a nice place to put it. Everything is quite familiar. If you're into 80s boards, good battery. Do you know what? This is a really solid car. Very little rust whatsoever. I love it, I love all the stickers as well. Absolutely superb. A 
work in progress and a car that will be looking and sounding a lot better in time because the man who owns it is very skilled indeed. Mm. I've just um, taken the bulb out. It's a festoon bulb and it has actually blown. So um, we're changing that. See, I can't help working on people's cars. I just noticed these things. This is such a good car. It's untrue. The headlining is a bit on the cheap side. That's where they cut costs a little bit. But honestly, this is just so delightful. The, the rear seats, there's so much room in this car. So much room. Ah, oh, right. Pop the bonnet. Let's go. Love the trims you get on these. Just you don't see many of them with the trims on. They usually, and I'm not being funny about this. Most of these are modified. Now again, this is a low, low mileage, one owner from you, absolutely cared for to a T. Um, the mileage on this thing is ridiculously, ridiculously low. Do you want me to share you the mileage? I'm not joking. Now. This has actually done 16,000 miles because I think there was a problem with the clock and it was replaced for another one. That was the only thing that was replaced. And that's got 11,000 11, miles on it. That's it. That's literally it. And most of these are, I've not been funny, they're modified. Um, Corsa Bs have always been uh, one for the, uh, the, the boys to modify and I don't like them. They just look tacky to me, most of them. Um, finding peachy untouched examples like these is what i absolutely love on my channel and that's what i love people like to see cars that are not messed about with um, because that's what brings the nostalgia back and this car is the car that i gave the example of when rob took this to the local pub only a few people looked at this being a few years older than the maestro took the maestro a week later and the maestro got lots of attention so these are not quite getting the same amount of attention but they will get there because finding one like this is so rare i know what people are going to say as well these headlights were also used for the late reliant robin i know i know but you know that's that's just a, a little trivia the very late robins right and here we have the family one engine which is again a very very small engine it was kind of designed in the late 80s sort of uh, sort of mid to late 80s i suspect um it was a very long-lived engine and it lived in their cars for up until probably the early noughties at least when it was updated there was a lot of updates and i've lost track of gm engines and there was a family one uh, there's a family two oh, i was just I, I lost track but this is the smallest of the range the family one and uh it is a 1.2 and uh it's got an overhead cam with an end-on distributor, with uh, GM's name written all over this. Um, it is a quaint little engine and extremely reliable. Um, obviously, it is belt-driven, so cam belts need to be changed every so often. Um, but it is uh, a really nice car. It's had a new radiator recently, as some of you may have noticed. And uh, it's very clean. Look how straight it is. Look down here. Uh, all the warning stickers untouched. This hasn't been restored, guys, by the way. This is not unrestored and it's posing as a, a barn find. We know them sort of cars. Um, it isn't. Breakthrough Reservoir is in an interesting place. Um, but then again, I think the server would be hiding behind their way of tucking out the way. That would be a pain in the ass to change a brake master cylinder. But everything else is a real... Uh, a real nice uh, accessible position to get to and uh, remember it's a small car it's a small engine base so things have to be kind of constrained and tucked in there but um these were the days where issues were starting to come into their own but this car has very uh, a very basic form of uh, control again like the maestro um we have a lambda sensor uh our a heated exhaust oxygen sensor um as some people call it, there's different names for them. Um, but um, this is heated, I believe this is heated. It may not be actually, it might be just a reader of a sensor uh, because oxygen sensors didn't necessarily have to be heated back in the day. Uh, but obviously this has got a cat, so 
it needs that. So we are talking about just uh, the early days of cat cars. Uh, this lovely pipe that somewhat deteriorates and I won't touch it because they really do deteriorate badly. And this one is in one piece because it's been so well preserved. Now, I've just been told an interesting fact because voxels are not particularly my strength, as you can probably imagine. But apparently all this, this yellow stuff here is engine lacquer. And it's just what Vauxhall do to put on the engines, just to preserve the finish on the engines, which is why this is so well preserved. Um, but it goes a bit yellow over time. You can obviously remove it, but um, that is what uh, most Vauxhalls tend to have if they've been untouched. And this is untouched, and it's actually quite original. I actually would be very tempted to just leave it as it is, because as much as I like cleaning stuff, that's a very nice touch. And as I say, it's not, it just, if it doesn't have that yellow stuff on it, it's not generally uh, a Vauxhall engine. It's been completely rebuilt, sandblasted to death. Um, but um, yeah, single point injection there. Just a single, uh, what we call throttle body injection, just sitting right under into these two screws of, uh, oh, we've got the air filter here. We've got, the, we've got a housing under here to house the injector. Um, we have... Um, some form of uh, throttle uh, stepper motor to control the idle and uh, some very basic elements of control. I believe the, uh, yeah, I think the stepper motor acts on this arm by the way as usual. Um, or maybe that's the throttle, potentially not, but uh, the very, very early days of controlling the idle air mixture in a car, as, as I say, uh, and injectors were very much at their early part of gestation. Um, the gearbox is really tidy. It's again, it's got lacquer on it as well. Um, I can't believe how tidy this is in here. Uh, you got some sort of uh, oh, it's, that's the coil. Sorry, I was trying to work out that what that was. It is the coil. Just goes here. And it's mounted there. Uh, the oil filter has been changed. It has, it has been serviced. It just needs a bit of a clean up under here, just a bit of a detail because I think it does deserve a detail because the rest of the car is an absolute peach. It's got vehicle certification. I shouldn't have shown the VIN number. I have to block that out now. Uh, well, I, I just like to be careful. Um, the, the trims are fantastic, in fantastic condition. Uh, I mean, there's only a little mark on that one and that's it. Um, that's the bonnet. It, that's what wet sanding does, but it hasn't been wet sanded. No one's wet sanded this. It's just been cleaned and polished and kept in a garage. And <sighs> it's, it's just an absolute peach. And what I didn't know is the back lights. And I've been actually reminded about one particular thing. I've actually got this wrong. It is actually a 1.4. I thought it was a 1.2. 1.4 correction there, right in front of my face. We've got this weird heated rear window where we've got a squiggle around the wiper. I've got a feeling that was because the wiper would sit across it there so the elements can get and actually heat up the wiper, potentially the wiper blade itself, if it can go through the screen, if, if it warms the screen up, it may even warm the blade up. Maybe that's the idea of that. That's a really neat idea. Um, the backlights, these are unique to the five doors. The three doors got the sort of Mr. Blobby style rear lights. I call them Mr. Blobby rear lights because this is a blobby car. Um, it was pretty much at that time of, you know, the Rover R3 200, Mr. Blobby car, and then the Ford KA, blobby, and then the Focus Mark 1, blobby. Well, not quite as much, but still getting there. So um, I'm really pleased to have seen this. So um, I think for those of you who have actually owned one of these, you could probably relate. Um, but for me, in my family history, it's quite an important car. And I have full respects to this car. Unfortunately, the courses after this were not very good at all. Right, now we're going from a Corsa to something a little bit different on the other side of things. You know, when you go to a party and someone says, what car you got? I've got a Jag. I didn't say that right, did I? But this is what it is. It is an XJ8, uh, the 350. So um, the last of the old Jags, um, the last generation before they completely changed everything. And um, yeah, I, I, it just wasn't for me, the 2009 update. This is the last of the, the great old Jags. And it's definitely the Cratering, the Cratering's on wheels as such uh, we have full leather interior with the wood cappings it's yeah how many cows have died to actually produce this car it's just it's classy it's really classy it's way more i mean i'm not being funny 
I'm not into X types. I'm not into S types. I think they were just that was Ford cheapening out, and you can still see the Ford. Ah, uh, yeah, the Ford um, origins of this car. But overall, I'm just going to get in. This is the most expensive car that I've sat in, and um, I was strange enough. I was actually looking at one of these. Silence. It's a loud industrial estate and I can hear silence. You are cocooned away in this car and um, it is every single bit of DNA from the XJs that have gone before you can see in this car. We have the famous J gate, which uh, it's a pleasure. You have obviously no handbrake, electronic parking brake. This is quite an advanced car for 2003, so there will be things that people will see that they think, oh, I've got that in my Fiesta. Well, yeah, this car had it a long time ago before your Fiesta. Uh, we have full sat nav navigation on the screen. Uh, I'm just going to actually put the key in, which is straight ahead. And the chair is moving into the memory position straight away. Unfortunately, I have not been used to such a luxury car. So there are things that are going to scare me to death. Um, I'm going to remove this and oh, I've got the seats moved back. Right, I'm going to put it in. We have got 150, 50, how many? 15,000 miles on the clock. Utterly ridiculous. Let's put the ignition on. Now, I'm not going to press anything because, oh, actually, can I just push the button? It might turn on. I don't know. Honestly, I don't want to mess about with anything. That's me. But uh, we have uh, a mini disc. Oh, my God. We've got a mini disc. Remember when that didn't catch on? Yeah, that was a very short period where the mini compact disc had come out. Um, yeah, it didn't really catch on as much. But um, we've got all these period touches here i mean oh my god look at that for a cigarette lighter it's actually been used as well strange enough well it is a pipes and slippers jag yeah love it absolutely love it and this oh that is just so nice to touch that is just so nice this is me this is so me and that just slides off a catch and then slides back. It actually has two ways of going about. Now, you can either have it full on or you can just have it back and reveal the cup holders. But, uh, yes, it's nicely furred out. I think this material is a little bit, bit rough, actually. But overall, really, really nice. I'm just going to leave it in the backwards position for now because we are going to be using them. Uh, but these headrests are just oh, so sumptuous. Yes, thick seats and plenty of room. This was a prime ministerial car, naturally being an XJ. The headlining is of a usual material, what you'd find in most cars, strangely. It's just normal headlining material. Now this, the blind for the sunroof, and it is electric, and I'll see if I can actually break something else. Not sure what that's supposed to do. In fact, I won't touch it because I might not be able to close it again. Uh, that's me to a T. But look at the headlining wrapped around this uh, cover. You will not find many cars with the headlining that is actually actually upholstered onto the actual uh, sunroof uh, cover itself. Uh, we have some sensors, I suspect, for the air conditioning, possibly. Um we have some parking sensors up here. You push the button and it starts the parking sensors at the back. We have several functions here. Yeah, left, right, and obviously the main. We have an automatic dim dip mirror. I'll tell you what, excuse me, can I just reach the front screen? I can't even reach the front screen from where I'm sitting. The front screen ends some way down that way. Uh, yeah quite a long way um what i do love is the classy element of we've done the whole digital clock thing and we don't think it's worked and this was the early noughties where digital clocks were still quite kind of common you know we got the old lcd thing going on down there but analog clocks with jaguar written at the back how appropriate alongside these really nice air vents which obviously 
the XJ took further and had opening and the XF opening vents on turning the ignition key. Um, but we've got this just lovely veneer with a airbag disguised in here. But it's just beautiful veneer. Um, I think that does that. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be a bit smoother. I think uh, there is something a little bit missing from there. But again, this interesting material covering the glove box. This is really, really nice. There's a bit of wear around here, but what a lovely Jaguar badge to just look at. That is very, very nice. And I'll tell you something, I'm looking at this car and um, I can see the mascot. Imagine driving this car and all you see is the mascot. <sighs> Jesus. Yeah, this is definitely me. Uh, not the fuel consumption, because that might be a bit of a problem with this. Um, oh, yes. And then we obviously we've got infotainment, which is obviously you've got your connectivity, wireless calling, that sort of thing. Um, we've got all the buttons on the steering wheel. Again, something that has been copied by every single car manufacturer going. But Mercedes... Jaguar, BMW to some extent, and a couple of manufacturers, high-end, were doing this many years ago. We've got a lovely uh, trip computer. I'd say I, half of this stuff like boggles me. We've got, obviously, some intermittent wiper settings, which is very, very useful. Um, that This appears to be... That is a Ford Stork. Yeah, it feels like a Ford Stork, but just looks a bit more posh. Um, pedals, auto, column. Um, automatic setting, presumably, of the steering wheel. I'm not sure, but uh, I think that could be the case. Um, obviously, fog lights. We've got all sorts of uh, buttons. Obviously, kilometres. I think that would uh, alter that for a start, the, the reading. Obviously, we've got a little tiny dial. You, you push it in. Oh, yes. So you have to... I thought so. You push it in and then turn the dial for brightness on the dashboard and pop it back in. Fuel consumption, uh, I believe, unless I've just opened the filler flap. Yeah, I've actually opened the filler flap. That's what it's for. Electronic release of the flap and electronic release of the tailgate. I'm not quite sure what these buttons are for a start, so I'll have to ask uh, Rob that. But this is lo this lovely chrome handle. But it's got the old Ford thing where you have to move it. Not as much, but you still have to move it quite a fair bit, obviously, to lock it. That's a Ford thing. Look at this into this. <laughs> Borrowed straight from every single Ford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Ford thing. And this is, well, you know, as usual. One touch, as you would expect. And again, they come up really, really slowly. Lovely. Decent door mirrors as well. Gives you decent coverage on the rear of the car. Really nice. We've got massive storage in. The door cards. Oh, it's soft padded. Oh, it's so nice. I shouldn't touch it with my hands because I've actually been messing with another car. Um, it's just so sumptuous. I just love it. Love it. Although these sort of seats, they do get dirty very quickly. I can tell you that from my P6 days, uh, from having very similar coloured seats in sandalwood. Anyway, let's see what is under that bonnet. Right, I'll just uh, correct uh, my mistake. I'll just uh, push that open. There's an electronic release. Quite interesting. And I will show you in the boot because there's enough oh, boot space for couple of bodies here and there yeah that is utterly sumptuous that's a really decent carpet and <sighs> battery yeah every single piece not missing the original tire all dry as a bone at the bottom which is what you want to see it's a really deep boot well you can actually store quite a few things under that tray we've got this as well which seems reluctant to move at the moment ah there we go and oh we have the compact disc changer oh yes 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 hidden in there with a dvd yes obviously some of these cars got um screens on the back of the headrest this one doesn't have that but uh, most of them do Really plush carpet, obviously got some seat straps there, you know, just for 
uh, luggage straps for tightening whatever you want but very deep but it's actually quite um, level at this point but it goes deeper so if you just want to use this level it's not getting over a huge hump over the car which is a big problem with a lot of cars these days uh, we've got the warning triangle which is strapped to the back this material is just sumptuous it's you, your carpet on the back of the boot there's no chance of damaging any plastic trim when things go hitting the back there's nothing to damage um, yeah really sumptuous right you can open this with the key um, just gonna shut it and it automatically locks and obviously we've got the look at that yes I think Peugeot tried to copy Jaguar because I think on certain Peugeots the P or the O of Peugeot was the button for the tailgate uh, they copied them quite badly but um, being the XJ8 we have got a V8 engine up front um, these rear lights sumptuous a very very nice modern design of what I think is not being funny if you look at the back of the car with the way the chrome bumper well the chrome strips on the bumper sort of leer away to the back with these side repeaters that is XJ Series 3 territory that car was amazing for Jaguar yes okay rust and reliability and all that but they took a lot of design cues these wheels are absolutely sumptuous. They are classy as anything. And obviously, the suspension on this car is air suspension. If I can show you, we have a couple of airbags up there. And, you know, when they go, it's a light. It's 300 quid a corner. But it's actually quite a relatively simple job to replace them, uh, unlike a lot of cars. Uh, we have this beautiful front up, up here. Obviously, the headlights very much sort of X-type ish family orientated um but still they look a little bit more classy a bit more bigger than the x-type of the x-type and smaller lights potentially um but uh lovely chrome strips that come across the front it's still wearing it's um the 3d number plates remember the 3d number plates yeah when they tried to make them look interesting not quite but uh down here we got some uh, fog lights which have fogged up which is usual on any Ford product related. Um, got this lovely metal grill. That's classy. And they don't really patina. They come up so well with a bit of a metal polish. Very nicely. And this bonnet mascot is just sumptuous. At least this one hasn't been chiseled off. Push it in. And for the first time today, I've opened the bonnet, no struts, well, not manual struts, we have actual gas struts. Thank you, Ford, for doing that. Not Jager, Ford. Uh, because it is predominantly underneath. Well, it isn't actually, it's not a Ford, but it is owned by Ford, and there are many cues that, unfortunately, Jaguar had embedded in by Ford. It took quite a few years to forget that. One thing I have noticed, is we've got foam there, but we're, we're missing a foam on that side, so I'll point that out to Rob, actually. Um, this car is in the classic car auctions for a reserve price of £11,000, and that is actually very good going because it's got the V8 engine. Most of them are V8s. It's the desirable one. You can get the diesel version, but the V8s are the desirable one, and it really does sound like a pitch yes it's a bit lost under this huge great whacking air cover um but at least you can change the oil they recommend castrol 530 that's really nice imprinted on the cap there is no excuse for not changing with the correct oil there are several things that might be recognizable to ford focus mark one people there are some ford parts here and there but predominantly it's a jag it's a jag oh, and we've got some electronics for the airbag as well yes that's uh that's the only form of electronics that you'll need for the airbag um and this one rides incredibly well and obviously with this key we have um obviously the lock and the unlock the headlights to let you see into your house or whatever it only lasts for so long and the tailgate release but um yes yeah, the old ford, Ch ford chub key lovely chrome mirrors just the door handles i tell you what can I just put my hand here? I'm quite a thin person and my hands are quite bony, but my God, there's like 
that much room you could have really fat hands and not have a problem and it's contoured so nicely and that door that's really really quality fitting sound um obviously we we have got some adjustments on the seat that i did mention but anyway let's start this thing up we are in park so naturally we can start her up quiet as anything Is, is this a V8 or just a straight six? It's so smooth. It does have a little burble to it, but look how it's calming down already. It's so smooth. This has been very, very, very looked after, well looked after. Rob's had this a couple of years now, but it is trying, time to move the car on to a new owner who's gonna look after this because I think these XJs are always going to be in a very popular corner of the XJ Owners Club. And being the last of the old Jags, because they are, um, they will have obtained that modern classic desirability. I always thought that for a period of time, this and the Rover 75 were very much the equivalents because at the same time you had the Rover 75, you had the Jags. Yes, if you had more money, you had a Jag. I mean, look at the way it curves around the back. That is XJ Series 3 territory. It just is. The way the wings curve out the front, the bonnet loops. I mean, look at that. That is XJ, I mean, that's, that's not XJ Series 3. That's XJ Series 1. We're going back beyond that, actually. We're talking about the original S-Type, the bad boy S-Type, the Mark II Jag. They all have this curve, and that's what you pay for with a Jag of this uh, style. A modern car, but as a classical, timeless, traditional look. In quite a random twist as well, we're going to a car at the polar opposite again of what I've just shown you. Oh boy, yes, we have a Mark II Fiesta right in front of us, guys, on an E-plate. Yeah, that's it. Uh, wearing this beautiful, beautiful colour, uh, of which is uh, very difficult to get hold of or the right colour match. So uh, you have to go to Porsche, uh, believe you me. There's a Porsche colour. That's very similar to this. This car is fully restored. Fiesta 1.1. Registered. Mm-hmm. In Neath. Completely not to restore to an inch of its life. Um, it wears the trims. Mark III Fiesta people will probably know this as the bonus wheel trims. But uh, these are quite hard to get hold of, let me tell you. And... Uh, we do have um, some spares for this car, uh, so uh, that is quite nice to know because they tend to crack. Putting grease on them is the main thing. Uh, this has got a sunroof on this one. I'm getting distracted here. I think we might have a Mark III Fiesta in there that might be coming out in a second. I'm getting very distracted because Rob's bringing out another car. We have got rain on the way. I do not want to get this car wet in any manner whatsoever. This is an absolute peach, oh, let me tell you. Um, the boxy Fiestas, as I know, and the Mark II was more of a facelift of the Mark I. Um, put yourselves in your customer's shoes. Yeah, definitely. That's a very thin and light door, I can tell you now. And its brethren Mark III Fiesta is being reversed at this very stage. This Mark III Fiesta, is a 1.1 popular plus and um it's just been i think it's just been sold um for very pricey sum eight thousand miles that one and it's still got the original back box no downturned exhaust unfortunately rubies was too far gone anyway distractions this car What a contrast to Ruby this is, the backward step, the boxy blob 
box on the dashboard where they could just chuck it left to right. Yes, this is functionality, but it's meeting some curves. It's an 80s car, so there's a lot to, uh, a lot to see with this car. Oh, yes. Functional switches, chunky switches. You know, heated screen, wash wipe, fog lights, a lovely web counter. Yes, hello, g Reg. how are you? I do love the sound of a, a Kent engine. Uh, we have the uh, Fiesta badge here, which is like rubberized, it's sitting quite randomly. It looks like a blank plug, to be honest. Um, we've got a, a lovely big door mirror here. Uh, these door mirrors are quite nice. They are big, they are quite bulbous. We have a window guide that hasn't rusted. Thank God for that. You know how we like rusted window guides on this channel. This material is, ugh, it's like, I've got a thing about touching certain things. It's like cheap cardboard uh, for your toilet roll. You think, oh, it's nasty cardboard, but you keep touching it. Why are you touching it if it's nasty? It's like, I have to touch it again. It's like, oh, dainty door, door handles. That look as if they're going to snap because they're that thin. Um, lovely door, oh, windy windows, because we have no electrics. And obviously the Mark II Fiesta never came as a five door. So we have big massive doors at the front. Oh boy. And we have oh, too many badges, too many badges. We've got some adjustment knobs on the back. I don't know what these adjustment knobs are. Ah, right, we have got some, ah, it's a bit stiff. Hot or cold, sir? Can we go hot or cold? How interesting is that? It just looks like some, it looks like something really antiquated. And then obviously this, where do you want your air, sir? Do you want it at your face? Do you want it at the windscreen? Wow, interesting. Fan speed, wow. Fans on. Well, fan off, I presume. One, two, three, fan off, simple as. Cigarette lighter, which has got this rubberized, end to it wow again this is another low mileage car um and you are reading that uh correctly it's so it's on 70 70 000 miles approximately which is uh, just utterly nothing for this for this car um we come around here we have a very nice hazard warning switch look how it interchanges Absolutely perfect. <gasps> yes. Oh, excuse me. Mr. Corsa is off. We're moving a few cars around because he's got too many cars, guys. Too many cars. And he knows this. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Adjustment there. We've got a little door pocket there. More of an ashtray. There is... Uh, I won't touch this because we've seen that this, this door card has some deterioration. I think the backing board needs looking at on this one, but... You know how hard things are to get for these as this 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 feels like it's going to come away from the door card so i think i'd avoid putting stuff in there a little speaker grill there little cubby hole down there we've got oh got the fuses yes got some fuses at the back there very nice indeed oh, oh of course it's a choke what what, what could it what, what, what could it be of course it's a choke um, although, if you've got it on full choke and you've got a lot of keys, it might kind of get in the way, but I don't think so somehow. Uh, we've got a blank for something because this is not a high model at all. Um, <sighs> love it. I, I love the fact that the badge is just slightly faded, just like Ruby's. Um, <coughs> that's one heck of a horn. <coughs> yep, very nice indeed. And obviously, we have dashboard illumination on an individual stalk not a button on the dashboard hence why we have two stalks and obviously wipers etc very um yeah quite clunky actually i like this we have an aftermarket radio i know what people are going to say it looks a bit stupid and out of place well it's functional and you know rob likes his music but he has got the original radio that he could just put back in you know just saying guys um and uh, we've got a lot of space down here for lots of things the storage is fantastic obviously um didn't get electric windows in this so clearly blanks um bc box as usual quite um not 
the strongest of things, but they're okay. They're relatively okay. The handbrake lever is something very familiar to me with um, a Fiesta Mark III. Very similar handbrake indeed, and the handbrake works very well on this. We have kept the seat covers on. Uh, I will take the seat covers off in a second, but no glove box. We just have an open space there. Just a huge space so that people can see exactly what valuables they need to nick. Yeah, I think that's why so many of these, these were broken into. It's, uh, up here we've got um, a completely different sunroof. Uh, oh, trying to hook. There we go. Done. Done. And it's hooked up. And then we hook it down and hook it back in. Lovely. That's uh, a very manual way of doing things no twist knobs just a very basic way of doing things uh, we've got a little hook at the back there instead of a grab handle uh, so you can hook things at the back very useful this uh, headlining is so old school perforated like a perforated vinyl almost but it really works we've got more stickers there uh, and we got that's really interesting how this side of the sun visor is black I wonder what the idea was of that, having a bit of a contrast maybe? Maybe, maybe. Uh, but we have a very familiar interior lamp. So I'll just turn that off. Um, old fashioned, very thin stalked interior rear view mirror. Um, it's, it's really nice, this car. Uh, I will pull the bonnet in the usual way. Oh, what a clunk that was. with a, a clunk of the door. I do love the stripes. A lot of this is from uh, DMB uh, graphics that I've gone to in the past uh, for uh, a few things, and I need to get some badges. Yeah, yeah. Including the stickers as well on an E-plate. Obviously these wheel trims are all in really, really good condition. They do go a bit creamy, but getting these trims, absolutely impossible. But Rob's got a nice new set upstairs. I don't think he'll ever fit it to the car. It's one of them, once you've got it, I don't think you ever want to fit it because you're never going to find another set if they go wrong. So these are staying on for as long as they can. Uh, the fill fill and neck is rather low. Um, makes me think of an Austin Metro with a ridiculous low mounted filler. But that's what they were like back in the day. Um, obviously, similar sort of door locks. But obviously, an old fashioned key in, in this one. Uh, square indicators, yes. I know these indicators very well, the twist ones. We have an aerial which comes up. An aerial stuck on the wing as opposed to stuck on the roof. That is very depictant of an older car. Oh boy. That's the next car in the lineup. That's just running and getting warm. <sighs> too many cars, guys, too many cars. This car has been to places, it's been to shows. Mark II Fiestas are now highly valuable things. And um, unfortunately, I was about to do the stupid thing and come round and, oh, how do I get the bonnet open? Oh yes, because it's such an old school car. Mark one of Mark II Fiestas, you just hook it forward and then it hinges on that very strange spring. I'll just show you that. So it's sort of a, uh, a, a sort of safety catch. I think Volvos have a similar system where it's just a, a double jointed safety catch. Mercedes is, uh, again have a, a similar thing. But in here we have the Valencia HCS engine, which is a Kent engine. Yes, guys, it is derived from a Kent crossflow engine that started in the Ford Anglia. Ooh, very nice. Just hear that burble from that car. Yeah, we have a little bit of leaking of antifreeze in a couple of places. I can see some suspicious pink stuff going on. Um, but overall, she runs absolute sweet as a nut. A tiny little air filter. And obviously, we've got a wax stat, uh, which kind of allows hotter air to get into the engine when the temperatures are really cold on a, a cold start. Oh, boy. It's just so simple. I uh, I recognise the obviously the coolant temperature uh, sensor. Well, the coolant temperature switch, I should say. It's not a sensor; it's just a switch and operates the gauge on resistance in the car. We got a big, massive radiator fan, which is held together with absolutely. Um, at the moment, it's held in with no bolts at all. Yeah, 
I'll, uh, I'll remind Rob about that just in case it falls off. We don't have any accidents. BC box down there, very simple things. Not the strongest, but you know, they are what they are. Um, there's a, there's many parts for them these days and many replacements. The starter motor looks incredibly ancient as does some of the car, as you would expect for this sort of age, cast iron block. Yeah, top tip, in these engines, you must put copperies on the spark plugs because those spark plugs being, yeah, a dissimilar metal to cast iron, a steel spark plug thread, versus a cast iron block you can understand dissimilar metals seizing snapping plugs it's a bit of a problem so copper ease is needed very much um, steel spark plugs and aluminium blocks don't don't have that problem so cvh sigmas ztex don't have that problem at all um, but you have a lovely mechanical pump hidden right beyond the block driven by the camshaft obviously this is our overhead valve so the camshaft is lower down the valves are on top and it is a really important thing to adjust the tappets on these engines. And I'm just gonna come to this car. Listen to this. This is a 1.1 Kent engine in here. I will tell you how many miles this has done. 8,000 miles, 8,000 miles. Listen to how quiet it is. Now, I'm gonna turn this engine off just after you've listened to the exhaust. That is an early bat box, believe it or not. Unfortunately, Ruby's bat box did not have the flute at the end, it had rotted off. But this is one rare Fiesta to still have its original bat box. The original ones on an F and G plate will have a straight out uh, pipe with that flute at the end. Unfortunately, I've had to go down turn with Ruby because like the rest of them, you can't get the parts no more. Um, but anyway, I'm going to just switch this off just for a second because I'm going to switch this one on and we're going to compare if this one is okay on the tappets. They can get a bit tappety. It's the rule of nine, I believe. You obviously number one, open number one and check number eight with a feeler gauge, etc. Maybe not. There we go and switch that off before I get copyrighted. So. Okay. Struggling a little bit. It's a bit of, needs a bit of choke, but listen to that. That doesn't even need adjusting either. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. 70,000 miles, I believe the tappets have been checked but that's how they should sound. They're always going to be a bit tappity, but they should not sound really bad. I think the late Mark IV, Mark V Fiestas with the Endura engine, the Kent engine in a much more ECU-ified form, controlled, computer-controlled form, they sound really bad. And I think the quality of those engines definitely went down. But a Ford Fiesta it is a bit struggling a little bit. Might have to give it a bit of a kick, actually. Just go in the car. There you go. That is the sound of a Mark II Fiesta and that unfortunately is what a Mark III Fiesta cannot replicate. I think that's the only thing about a Mark II Fiesta that was lost with the Mark III's, that rasp. What a peach of a car.